Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz fans phone line after being there in person last night, part of the TNF crew on NFL Network, future first ballot Hall of Famer. I'll throw it out there. What the hell? Mm -hmm. Joe Thomas right here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Rich. So uh, you're a man well-versed in uh, seeing uh, backup quarterbacks or quarterbacks (laughs) not – uh, the starter in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, that was another situation. So I guess it was fitting that you were there last night. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I feel like uh, Baker probably would have played had he known I um, wasn't going to be there. But since every time I come to Cleveland, there's a new quarterback <laughs> that's uh, under center. It just felt right that Case was going to be the one that was taking the snaps and playing some good football, some winning football for this Browns team that desperately needed that win last night. Now, I was calling my shot earlier this week. I was feeling my my oats, man. And I was saying, like, I'm like, look, Case, when he does well, when he performs well, because he is good in this role, this role of needing to come off the bench and being there and giving you the football that you need to win – And also, he knows the system. The coach knows him. That's why he's there, right? Like, this is essentially why he's there. He is an outstanding backup to um, Baker Mayfield. And I do not say that in any way, shape, or form other than being complimentary, although Case might not feel that way. But I basically set this all up to say is that there's no sense there in Cleveland that, that this is Case's job, is there? No, I, not 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 right now. I mean, that might be something that could be talked about later on. But I think right now, Browns fans are just very excited about what they saw last night because it was a season that was really on the brink at three and three to go to three and four and lose to the Broncos on national television. The mindset in Cleveland and in the building for the Browns would have been completely different. Uh, it would have been so much more dour and it would have been tough to talk themselves into how do we save the season, right? But having Case go out there and play as efficiently as he did, I mean, he was tremendous with the play-action pass. And to see the running game thrive without Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt uh, and to see a guy that is very much beloved in Cleveland in the building and Dearness Johnson have a breakout game in his first game as a start in the NFL was really the type of storyline that you needed to feel great about where you were going, especially as the Browns head into one of the most difficult schedules in the NFL coming up. Yeah, I mean, De- Ernest Johnson coming up with a big game. And and again, Keenum, you know, um, I guess let's put a pin in that part of the conversation. I should have led with this with you. Him on the set with you and Colleen and, you know, Irv and Steve last night was just um, – Great. When he said, you just, you know, you don't have to, what did he say? You, you don't have to get ready. You, if you don't have to get ready when you are staying ready. Yeah, right. And then, and then you're like, that's it. What a walk off. And he just, you yeah, know, said, you I'm know, out. So See you. Like Costanza. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. It was the best mic drop in Cleveland since MGK did it at the draft when we were there uh, in the spring. And it was, it was just such a great moment because I think, like you mentioned earlier off the top, like Kevin Stefanski as the head coach, having Case Keenum here understanding the offense, understanding how to operate efficiently, getting the ball where it needs to go, and not really losing a beat from having Baker in there, giving your playmakers an opportunity to make plays, and then having an offensive line that's been banged up at tackle, getting Jed Wills back, getting that running game going. I think it really kind of paves a blueprint to win some of these games, especially as you're beat beat up a little bit, for them to kind of feel really good as they get guys healthy in the next couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, it helps to have the mini-buy here, and then on the end of the mini-buy are two crucial, highly important division games. Their first of the year with the Steelers and the Bengals right after this mini-buy. So do you think that they can get wins in those games with Case Keenum, Joe Thomas, what do you think? As long as they're able to run the ball the way they have been and the way they did last night, I I believe that Case Keenum has absolutely the tools necessary to win all the games in the division. I'm not saying they're going to go 6-0 here, but I I feel that as long as they can run the ball, what Case Keenum does really well is he is really good in the play action. I think he was like 10 of 13 last night with 130 some rating um, in play action. And, and that can only happen if you're effective running the ball. So with that offensive line, Bill Callahan uh, setting up the run game for those guys, it really is something that can open up that whole offense. And Case Keenum's the efficient quarterback that they need to be able to 
run that and win some of those big games, especially if they've got a defense that is going to continue to improve. What do you think is going through Baker Mayfield's mind this morning, Joe? What do you he's, think? he's extremely happy that they won, but he's also extremely excited to hopefully get out there as soon as possible because this is his team, and it, it always has been, um, and it's killing him to not be able to be out there. He's such a competitor. Um, but also, as, as a quarterback or as, as a, any player in the NFL, when you're seeing your backup go in there and play well, you're saying, hey, that's great, I'm happy, but I want to be the one that's out there making the plays because I certainly don't want to have any sort of quarterback controversy here once I do get ready to be healthy and get back out there. Well, why would there be a quarterback controversy? I mean, and that's that's that was what I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, you know? I mean, part of the reason why that game was won last night is because the defense did stand up and take care of business against an offensive unit that, that was, um, you know, ready, you, there to be beaten. You know what I mean? And it's, it's this team game, it always seems to be falling on Baker's shoulders whether they're healthy or not so why would there be one i don't that that one is kind of mystifying to me joe you want to translate it that's that's a great question baker has always been one of the most polarizing figures in sports certainly in the nfl people love him people hate him and i think when you have that type of personality and you're in the spotlight as much as he is and you know he's never shied away from uh picking some fights in the media or with other players um i think when when you have that big personality you're going to have people that are going to want to shoot you down. They're going to want to give every opportunity when they see an opening to knock you down a peg, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. And Baker's been up and down this season. He has. I mean, um, I think in Brown's nation, the expectations are to win a Super Bowl, and they want to see their quarterback consistently play Super Bowl-winning football. And Baker has done that at times, but he just hasn't been, I think, consistent enough. Not saying that Case Keenum gives him a better opportunity to win a Super Bowl, because I don't think he does. Um, But I think you add all those factors together, and that's why Baker is such a great and fun topic for people in the national media and even a lot of people in Cleveland and in the Browns nation. uh, They love to talk about Baker. Well, Joe Thomas, I know that Browns fans would love to say, you know, let's win. They're going to hoist the Super Bowl this year trophy up the road from the studio in Los Angeles. And they'll remember, I guess, that Thursday night win to spark it all with Case Keenum when they were all banged up. And then Baker came back and everyone got healthy and then they started dominating it's just tough to see that point B from this current point A, to be very honest with you, when there's the Ravens atop their division, uh, the Bills, despite their loss to Tennessee, Derrick Henry running wild the way that he is. And then, of course, whoever might come out of the AFC West. So how do you handicap the AFC as we're currently mm-hmm. getting set for the rest of Week 7, Joe? Yeah, you, you really make it sound tough, because in my head, the Browns had already won the Super Bowl after watching <laughs> what sorry. I saw last night. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I agree. I, I think the Browns certainly, uh, in all aspects, need to play better if they want to have serious Super Bowl aspirations, because you mentioned how difficult the AFC is already at baseline with the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs and the, the Las Vegas Raiders. And then you look over at the AFC North, and that might be the best division in football all of a sudden after some early struggles by the Steelers and not really understanding how good the Bengals are. Now the Bengals all of a sudden have this really good defense. They've got this young quarterback, Joe Burrow, who's playing outstanding football, and then Lamar Jackson in the MVP race again. And then all of a sudden the Pittsburgh Steelers start to figure things out a little bit. And you've got a division that, you know, I don't know what it looks like at the end of the season, but you might have three, four teams that are over 500 that are all vying for that last playoff spot in the AFC down to week 18. So it's certainly going to be a challenge for the Browns. Um, but I like where they're they're uh, sitting right now because I think defensively, if they can continue to play a little bit better and they just keep leaning on that run game, getting Chubb and Hunt back, it's a tough formula for other teams to handle when you're playing in December, when you're playing in the AFC North, run the ball, play stout on defense, get after the quarterback with a pass rush. I I like that formula for winning down the stretch. Who was your preseason pick for winning the Super Bowl, Joe Thomas? I'm sure it was the Browns. I I have no idea. You don't remember? um, Come on. Various shows that I was on, what I picked, but certainly I'm a homer for the Browns. No, I know that. But I'm just trying to to say I I have the the Chiefs taking on – 
the Bucks again. Mm. I just decided you know, like it's been a yeah. long time since we've gotten a, mm. a return engagement. Um, kind of like where the Bucks are playing and how they're sitting mm-hmm. right there. What do you think of the Chiefs? Are you thinking that they're vulnerable or that we're, yeah. it's still too early? I think they're vulnerable, especially when you look at just the resurgence of all these other great teams looking at Arizona, how great Tampa Bay is playing, Green Bay is rolling, you've got the Ravens and the Bills and the AFC and Tennessee's coming on and, you know, there's just so much quality talent from top to bottom that have great offenses and defenses that I just don't think the way Kansas City is built with so much pressure on this offense to score so prolifically that they're going to be able to make a run through the playoffs and win a Super Bowl because it's just so difficult to be at your best uh, for an offense every single week um, to be able to make your way through and to not have a defense to be able to lean on at all. Uh, So I I think – You look at the Bills in the AFC, and right now the way the Ravens are playing, they're just a much more well-rounded football team that's built to be able to go in Mm. and maybe one side has a bad game, but the other side can pick it up, and Kansas City doesn't have that right now. And who's your favorite in the NFC? Who do you like? you got to choose one. That's the way we do it on Sports Talk Radio. Right now I'm picking the Cardinals. I love where that team is. The defense is sort of a little bit like the Bengals when I think about them, right? The Bengals had this defense that nobody was really talking about, but it was really, really a big part of where they are right now. And last year, the Cardinals, their defense is what had them in a lot of those games. And then this year, defense playing even better with the addition of J.J. Watt. And now they've got an offense with weapons that we haven't seen since maybe the greatest show on turf, just torching Mm. people on that side of the football. It's just a really difficult team to defend especially on offense because they're beating you with athletes i mean how do you practice for guys that are just more athletic than your dudes in one-on-one situations the way they spread you out it's difficult to come up with a scheme to make your guys better athletes yeah i know we were we were we were talking the other day with marshall falk saying it's impossible to scout team against derrick henry because what are you going to use a defensive end you know, and that, that's what Marshall said earlier this week. He says, you got to use a defensive end to, to scout team for Derrick Henry. I wouldn't know how, how do you scout team for, for Kyler Murray, right? I mean, like that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a tough comp for your, yeah, I, your 53. I, I agree. You know, you, you look at the playoffs. When, when do teams usually get uh, their toe stubbed in the playoffs? It's right. Somebody's been coming, been game planning, and they come up with this really good game plan to kind of take away what your go-to plays are. You know, we saw it in the Super Bowl with the Rams a few years ago against the Patriots, right? You know, Bill Belichick comes up with this great game plan and this scheme to be able to shut down schematically what that offense does really well. But when what you do really well, like Arizona is, we just spread you out and play basketball, and then we just out-athlete you at every position. Like, how do you come up with a game plan to defend that? You can't. There is no game plan that can make your dudes better in a one-on-one situation because even when you have the perfect defense called, like we've seen multiple times this year, and you got Kyler Murray on the edge running to his left, and you got guys that are ready to make the play, he makes a little shimmy and a shake, and all of a sudden your dude's on the ground and he's running for a 15-yard first down. As a defensive coordinator, you're just ripping your hair out because you work so hard to put your guys in position to win a one-on-one battle that typically is in their favor against the quarterback and then you lose that's just got to be so discouraging for a defense joe thomas appreciate the time always love watching you on tnf on nfl network and so much more uh let's do this again very shortly we'll uh, look for my call thanks for thanks for the time joe Thanks, Rich. I appreciate you having me on. You got it. Six-time All-Pro, 10-time Pro Pro Bowler, at Joe Thomas 73 on Twitter. Joe Thomas on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.